Welcome to this free immigration help channel. Today is April 27, 2023 and we are getting into the volume 75 of me answering your immigration related questions. As you can see, I have all your comments pulled up here. Uh, as always, I'm going to mention before we begin, I'm not an immigration attorney. This is not a legal advice. All the information that I provide in uh, these videos on this channel are directly from official government sources, USAS, Actually, let me go to the main page of USAS. There we go. Close this one. And of course, the Department of State with their visa bulletin. This is the most recent one from May 2023. So let's start with the very first question coming from Nectar99. I need your help, please. It's my first time to receive an offer letter from US school. Now, to get that certificate, they require I-94 or CVS number. That is weird. That is impossible because I didn't travel before USA or not a student. Exactly. And employment authorization card is help me or I need something else. Please help me. Okay, Nectar99. So I don't think the uh, I-765, the uh, application for employment authorization, the video that you're asking the question on is applicable to you at the moment at all. I don't think you have to worry about that one at all. I would say a little bit of a concern is the school. It sounds a little bit weird. Why? Because um, usually the, the CVS number, it comes from the I-20, the form basically from the school that they send you that says that you are now enrolled as a student. So I, unless it's some kind of small school that doesn't know what they're doing in dealing with international students, I, I, would, I would assume, you know, everybody has to understand, you know, what's going on. So... I'm not sure if it's a legitimate school in general, but you know, just double check, double check to make sure that this is a real deal because they provide you the CVs number. You know, you, you don't provide them anything. You obviously provide the application, you provide the tuition fees, whatever you have to pay for the school um, to get enrolled. Once you're enrolled, they send you all that information. So I'm, I'm not sure why they are, uh, asking for I-94 or, or CVs before you're even enrolled doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, so I would check on that and, and verify that this is a legitimate school in general, um, just to be on the safe side, because, you know, as you understand, as everybody, you know, who's watching understands, there's a lot of scam that is going around, uh, especially in the field of, you know, whenever it comes to immigration, whether it is, you know, schools, employment, marriages, Asylum refugee, there's a lot of stuff. So you have to be, uh, you have to have a good discernment. So I'm gonna put this. And if you have any follow up questions, do not hesitate to ask me. Just make sure you submit it in a separate comment. Don't respond to my comment within your comment because then I don't see those notifications here on this wall. All right, moving further to Jacob Garces Marcus. Great video. I'm glad, Jacob, this was helpful. Moving further to King Germain. Hello, sir. My sister is a U.S. citizen and she wants to start a petition for her dad. So I'm assuming I want to start a petition for alien relative. Can you please tell me what are the documents my father needs to have to start the petition? Thank you very much, sir, for answering my question. Greatly appreciate your channel. It really helps a lot of us whom are waiting. Well, I'm glad this is helpful. Uh, so whenever it comes to starting a petition for someone, your dad really doesn't need to worry about much. It's uh, it, it, it's your sister that has to initiate the petition. Uh, the documents that are required to submit the initial petition are very basic stuff. You know, you're just proving the relationship. You're just proving the fact that it is really her dad that she's filing for. Uh, but what she needs to concentrate on and I'll see if I can post the link. I'll show you. This is the official government website for U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. This is the website that uh, she will start working with uh, in order to get that petition started. So I'll show you how to find that form and then I'll put the link directly to the form so that you, know, you can send it to her. So we'll go to forms at the very top of the navigation menu here. Click on forms and then all forms. And this will give you all of the immigration application petitions that are available. There's a lot of them. You can scroll down or you can type in 130 because that is the petition that we need. I-130. So I'm going to click on this. 
It's available to file online, which I highly recommend doing, filing it online. It makes it much easier, much faster, uh, less possibility for the mistake. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to post this and I'll say link and I'll post this link in because this is what she will need to fill out this form I-130 um, online so you can forward that to her and this is just the start of the process if you want to learn more about the process in general how that works I actually have the video on this channel it's called I don't remember exactly what it's called but it's basically I-130 petition from start to finish family reunification process from start to finish that's what it's called and i do have a separate video on how to fill out i-130 you can find all of this on on, on this channel uh, and basically you submit the i-130 petition once uscis approves it they transfer the case to the nvc then you do you know you submit some documents some fees to the nvc once they approve it they send the case to the local u.s embassy for a final interview where your dad goes and gets his uh, immigrant visa and comes here as a resident into the United States of America. Um, gotta keep in mind that, you know, on the plus side, that because your sister is a US citizen and she's uh, petitioning for a parent, there is no visa cap on that particular category. So you won't have to deal with the visa bulletin at all. There is really not much wait time. It's really just waiting for USA's approved the petition and then the NVC. But if you have any questions along the way, you can always come back here and ask your questions. All right, let's move on to the next one from MD Ali. Sir, I want my bond money back. I have all document, but I don't know the process. It would be great help to me if you could help me, sir. And thanks for reply, my first comment. MD Ali, no worries at all. I, I wish I could help you more, but I, I, I really can't. First of all, I don't even know where your money is at, all right? Um, what was the I know you 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 told me that you had your money uh, as a bond with someone for over 20 years now and like I said in my initial reply because it's a bond as what you're telling me usually you know the, the government agencies whoever it is mo most of the times it's courts immigration courts and that have to do with deportation proceedings that's why they require these bonds so that you do show up for that hearing and if you don't show up obviously you cannot get that bond and usually when you do satisfy the requirements of the bond within four weeks this money are returned and you told me that it's been over 20 years so first of all I'm not even sure that you can get that money back after so long second of all I don't know where it is uh, I just, you know, I, I, if you give me more information, maybe possibly I can do some research and, and, and let you know. Uh, but I, I, as of right now, I have absolutely no idea where the money is and why it's been there for so long. So if you can give me those details, maybe I can give you a little bit more information. But as of right now, that's, that's really all I can tell you, unfortunately. Sorry, MDLE, I wish I could help you a little bit more. Let's move on to the next one from Denise. Denise to four. Denise, thank you for another comment. Appreciate it. I'm in F1 category. My priority date is March 2017. The NVC is not allowing me to pay my fees. Can I get the estimated time of which the next bulletin will be available? And which graph should I use for the F1? Is it A or B? Okay, Denise. So like I've already mentioned several times, you use both of the graphs. You use A and you use B for f1 category it does not depend on the category it depends on where your case is if it has been approved by usas and it is already with the nvc then obviously you can use both a and b if you if it's still with usas then you're checking processing times on usas you're checking the graph b if it was already documentarily qualified you're looking at the graph a so as of right now for example because we know that it, it was already approved by usas and it was already transferred to the nvc even though if nvc didn't give you the full access to the portal we can look at the graph b first 
F1 category and we see that there's January 2017. That's the cases, that's the priority date by which they have to basically be done with everything and transfer the case to the NBC and let you become documentarily qualified. Now, I think your portal uh, for documentarily qualification, it should be opening up very soon, the full access to the portal because you are already, because you, you know, you're, you're in uh, March 2017 and right now it is, January 2017. So it's what? January, February, March, like two months. So within the next two, three months, you should be getting the full access to the portal, the NBC portal. If you don't, then you definitely do need to submit that public inquiry form with the NBC. But as of right now, everything seems to be within the time frame. Once that portal opens up and once you become the documentarily qualified, then you're looking at this graph right here, graph A. However, Everyone who's watching this and, and following the kind of like the uh, the instructions, I guess, of using the visa bulletin, be aware that graph A is has not been updated and it might create some confusion in some cases. That's why I refer more to the graph B and stick to it to, to make my estimates because a lot of the stuff on this graph right here, on graph A has not been updated for a while and some of these, you know, some of the updates that came out, they do create some confusion because there was closures during the pandemic. So these numbers are not normalized yet, all right? They're still heavily, heavily, very heavily affected by, you know, the closures uh, during the pandemic. So as of right now, Denise, if you stick to the graph B, you would be better off. Um, two more months, two, three more months to full access uh, to the NVC portal. And then obviously you'll have to uh, pay the fees, submit the documents again, financials, affidavit of support, all that good stuff. Usually be to become documentarily qualified, if everything is smooth, it, it might take three to four months for NVC to review all your documents and get you documentarily qualified. If there are some kind of delays, for example, you submit, um, let's say you submit an affidavit of support and NVC determines that it's, you didn't show enough money to show that you were able to be a sponsor. They might obviously, you know, tell you that, hey, you need a joint sponsor. So a little bit of back and forth, you know, you might add another two, three months on top of that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's really it. That's, that's really it. But once you are documentarily qualified, then you're kind of going off of these dates uh, to help you establish when the interview, for example, for F2A right now, we know that people who are documentarily qualified, they are waiting about two, two and a half years um, to get their interviews. But again, that's for you in the future. So I'm gonna put this, and there's also a response from Nicola Persaud. Also, when the fees options become red, then it's time to pay. Something is happening to me. You have to know which category you come under. I'm also F1, which is US citizen sponsorship, sponsoring a child or children older than 21 years of age. Yep, Nicola, Nicola this is correct. So I'm gonna post this and we're gonna move on to the next question from Reinhard Clark. Hey, my petition got approved in 2020, congratulations. My priority is March 2017 for F1, also Reinhardt, just like De Denise. Denise, category rest of world, the portal is not allowing to pay the fees. Yes, I messaged NVC and they told me my visa number is not available. When do you think I would be able to be documentarily qualified? So Reinhardt, Clark, exactly the same answer uh, as I was just telling Denise uh, or Dennis. Two, three months, you should have full access to the portal for, you know, to proceed with the documentary qualification. Uh, again, documentary qualification might take, you know, three, four months if everything is smooth, the bird is back, if everything is no problems. Um, and then uh, once you're documentarily qualified, then we are looking at the graph A. Although again, right now, graph A is a little bit out of control. So don't let it scare you because things are just finally now starting to update. So within the next two, three months, we will see, um, we will see what's, you know, a more accurate numbers and more accurate dates. All right, let's move on to the, oh, actually, you know what? Denise also asked, we estimated time of which next bulletin will be available. So next bulletin, usually a new bulletin, it comes out at the end of the month. So 
around April 20, May Visa Bulletin came out. Around May 20, June Visa Bulletin will come out. Around June 20, July, so 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 far, so forth. So somewhere at the end of, of the month, the new month's Visa Bulletin comes out. But once it does come out, once the new Visa Bulletin comes out for June 2023, I'll make a video on this channel, um, again, going through all of the numbers, like I did May 2023 Visa Bulletin, comparing it to the previous months, and just, you know, seeing what the updates are. It's, it's for you guys, it's for me as well, because I do have a petition that I'm waiting on myself. All right, moving further to Vaganza Lee. I am US citizen, want to sponsor my parents through I-130. If my brother is living in the same address as me, will my brother be accountable for household expenses or not? But on my W-2, it's, it is not included in my dependents. Will it be a problem? Okay, Vaganzali, excellent question. So it's not going by the W-2, it's going by the tax returns. So if you are filing your tax returns and you're saying that your brother is in the same household and you know you, you either you file it together or you put him as a dependent or whatever then yes of course you know then he is part of the household then of course whatever expenses he has if it's not you know if it's not a contribution to the household income but instead kind of uh, just the expenses and it's minus uh, to the uh, household income, then yes, of course. Uh, but if you are not, if you're filing the taxes by yourself and on, on, on the taxes, you're showing your household size as, let's say it's just you, then it's, you know, then your household of, of, of one. Although, because it is your brother and because you live at the same address, still, it's a little bit of a tricky, tricky uh, scenario because uh, because you're living together, then most likely you are showing on your taxes, on your tax, whenever you're filing your taxes, that uh, you you have a household of, you know, you, your brother, and whoever else uh, lives in a household. So again, you can use it as uh, as an advantage to you because you're showing, yes, your household is, you know, household size is bigger, but at the same time, you know, if your your brother has some kind of income, you can add that and you know a combined income and show you know that that's going to be enough uh or it can go the other way around if your brother just has the expenses and he's on your tax return and you write off some of the expenses that he has on the tax return so it really depends on the situation um i would probably recommend because it is taxes because it's you know i would recommend talking about this with the cpa um, was an accountant just just to be on the safe side just to be sure uh, but one thing that I wanted to tell you for sure is that when you are starting your I-130 you don't have to worry about any of that at all uh, especially if you're filing it online which I would highly recommend doing uh, so just start your I-130 petition because the process takes some time even though you're uh, um, you know because you're filing for your parent um, you're not going to be waiting for the availability of the immigrant visa because there is no cap, there's no limitation, um, and this is this is considered immediate relative category. But still, you know, you have to wait for USAS to review the case, then it's transferred to the NVC, then you're dealing with NVC, um, but you still have to wait for that USAS uh, approval. When it gets to the NVC, it is then that you really start to deal with the financials. Before the NVC, you really don't deal much with the financials. USAS, mostly they care about uh, establishing the uh, relationship rather than the ability to sponsor uh, the beneficiary. So keep that in mind. Hopefully this answer was helpful. If you have any follow-up questions, do not hesitate to ask them on this channel. All right, moving further to Layla Arslan, thank you for everything. You're very welcome, Layla. I tried so hard and finally I succeeded. Because I'm not learning English, I am Kurdish. Finally, with your support, I have completed my deficiencies and my asylum was granted. Wow, congratulations, Layla. Good to know you. You're a very nice person. God bless you. Never give up. Nothing is impossible. Layla, thank you for your kind comment and update. It, it uh, it's, it's great. It's fantastic to know that you know this uh, 
this video was was helpful to you uh that's awesome Layla. I'm, I'm really happy thank you thank you very much for uh, letting me know that that is a true blessing i i really appreciate it god bless you too and uh you know good luck on uh, your journey on on your on your immigration journey all right moving further to tanisha bell hi i live in jamaica my husband is green card holder my priority date is february 13 2022 how long will it take for my priority date to become current all right tanisha thank you for your question so you know your husband's green card holder so it means you are in f2a category spouses of permanent residents so let's take a look and see what's going on at the visa bulletin if we scroll down we know the priority date it is in 22 this is showing current here this hasn't been updated for a while but let's actually take a look at the uh, usas website because i think that because it was pretty recent a little bit over a year ago that the petition was submitted and accepted by usas I am thinking it might still be with USAS. So let's take a look at USAS website. We're gonna go to tools here at the very top of the navigation menu and then case status online. And I wanna check the processing times and see what the processing times are. Now, keep in mind this processing times, they will vary from um, service center to service center, but I want to get a general idea. I think it's about a year permanent resident filing for a spouse. This is it. This is what we need. No, actually, you know what? I think it's a year right now for a citizen. I think it might be about two years. So let's check. Let's check California first and see how long it takes. Okay, so 25 months, about two years. Texas, 17 months. So depending on which service center it is, I would say as of right now, roughly two years, right? So I'm thinking your case is still with USAS. Once your case is approved by USAS, it will be transferred to the NVC. NVC will give you the access to the portal pretty quickly because I don't know, F2A, you know, it's hard to tell. Right now it says current for the, you know, priority date. But this has not been updated for a while. Hopefully in the next couple of months we will see the update. However, in the graph A, it is telling us that people who are documentarily qualified with F2A already are waiting about two and a half years. So if your, let's see, if your priority date is February 13, 2022, we have, and it's very rough estimates. Um, it might be much faster. It's very rough estimates, keep that in mind. But from what we know with USCS, roughly, judging by you know texas california you have about one more year roughly a little bit less than a year to become approved with usas and then transfer to the nvc nvc they usually take about you know three four months depending on the availability of the immigrant visa depending on the category um hopefully it will be faster also depends on you know if you submit all of the right documents and there are no problems with them and then of course waiting for an interview for documentarily qualified. Right now it's two and a half years, but it might speed up. So all in all, I would say we are looking at about three to four years. Again, it's a very, very rough estimate as of right now. Things might speed up, hopefully they will. That's why it's important to stay on top of the visa bulletin every month, it comes out. This is the most recent one for May, 2023. Uh, we're gonna have June, hopefully in the next few weeks. Once it comes out, I'll make a video on it and uh, we will see if there's a movement on F2 wave priority dates to give us a little bit better, uh, better dates, you know, more accurate dates. Um, again, the, the, the problem that we're having with these dates, why they're so inaccurate is because of the closures during the pandemic. So it's, it's possible to make rough estimates, but they're very, very rough. So keep that in mind, please, Tanisha. And, uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Let's move on to the next one from Blossom Robinson. No, it's not. No, it's not yet approved. Okay. Well, maybe we'll find out later. If there's something else. Luna Aura, mother is rising. Very helpful. Thank you. You are very welcome. I'm glad this was helpful. Moving further. Okay. There you go. Blossom Robinson. I'm a citizen filing for unmarried son and daughter over 21. My priority date is June 2017. They are in Jamaica. Please let me know how soon I'll get approval. Blossom Robinson, so I have already today twice I answered someone who had a, you know, March 
2017 F1, so you're June 2017. So that means that there is, right now they are on January 2017, which means that there's February, March, April, May, June. So roughly four to five more months until you have the full access to the NVC portal. If it has not been approved by USCIS yet, and you said that it's 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 not yet approved, um, uh, it, it should be reviewed in the next couple months. Once it is reviewed, it will be transferred to the NVC and you should be getting the full access to the NVC portal within the next you know five months you should you should have a full access to the NVC portal um, if it is a you know check the USAS check the processing times what is the you know what is the service center so you said that US citizens filing for child unmarried child there you go and let's see California again I'll check California and the Texas 76 months let's take a look so 76 divided by 12 it's six a little bit over six years and then let's check Texas 42 divided by 12 it's three and a half years so it sounds like more more like California you had your uh, casing because they take about six years and if we judge uh, count from not judge count from June 2017 we will get a little bit over than June. No, we get June, July, August. August, September of 2023 is when, if it's in California Service Center, because that's what it sounds like. By the time that you're giving me, that's that's what it sounds like. That's where the case is. So again, if it's within the normal processing times, there's really not much that you can do. All you can, can do is just, you know, be patient. And I, I, I know it's uh, not probably the best suggestion or advice to be patient at least it's a little bit annoying I know it's a little bit annoying but I have petitioned myself I am waiting too. I'm, I'm being patient too so we're all in this together all right when I say be patient I'm not saying it like oh just be patient and whatever because I have to deal with this as well so I can definitely understand how it feels okay let's move on to the next one from Chioma eBay Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. Please, M, F1 family category have been documentarily approved. My priority date is January 24, 2016. Please, when do you think my interview will be? Okay, so you're already documentarily qualified. In this case, we will be looking at the graph A for F1. And it is showing us the December 2014. Again, these dates are not very updated, not very good. Um, we will see hopefully in the next few months more you know more accurate numbers but if we judge by what we have December 2014 and you have been okay so when have you been documentarily qualified that is the information that I need it would be helpful but if you are in January 2016 for the priority date it means that you are one year over so you probably got documentary qualified about a year ago and you were probably about I would say roughly about two years from your interview and this is pretty much what F2A category is waiting for because this is the updated number this is the updated date we got an update recently um, we will see on these dates too hopefully we'll get the update but this is so far you know a very rough estimate that I can give you about two two and a half years again things might speed up and hopefully they will we will see uh, they have been uh, there was a pretty good movement on May 2023 visa bulletin but we'll, we'll find out we'll find out in the next few months it will become a little bit clearer so make sure to stay on top of the visa bulletin it's very important okay moving further to Memiela Consing about my daughter i'm a u.s citizen and i filed last february 2 2022 my daughter is over age but not married she had children okay so your daughter if you're a u.s citizen is going to be f1 category and uh look ha had a lot of people today with uh, f1 category it's it's a uh, it's very honestly every single category that we have on the visa bulletin is unfair you know 
if U.S. citizen is inviting their brother, why do they have to wait forever or sister? If uh, you know, if a permanent resident is inviting their spouse or child, not inviting, petitioning for to reunify, it's a family. Why do they have to wait for years? It's re it's ridiculous. It's 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 really really bad. This is probably one of the biggest worst parts about the immigration because it treats legal immigrants who follow the process who do everything legally it makes them wait for so long it's it's really sad i don't think it's going to get better i don't think it's going to change it's just we have to deal with it and that's why i that's why i tell it all the time you know if somebody tells me hey i want to file i want 30 for my somebody i say don't want it do it do it right now because you don't know the things only get worse all right in two three years down the road while you're waiting to file that petition you know the times might go longer they might find another pandemic whatever and close everything or completely stop giving out these visas we don't know so the sooner you do it the better um sorry Mimela, i went on this rant about the problems with the immigration field i'm very sorry about it. so if you have filed in 2022 I'm thinking that your case is still with uh, with USCIS. Uh, now, let me take a look, actually. Pressing times. I want 30 U.S. citizens filing for unmarried son and daughter, 21 or older. Yes, Texas Service Center. So, about depending on where it is, depending on whether it's which service center it is, it can be anywhere between four to six years that you're going to be waiting for the approval from USCIS. Uh, and then, of course, once it is approved, it is transferred to the NVC, and then you, you, you have to become documentarily qualified. Then you have to you know, wait for the availability of the immigrant visa. Then there is an interview. So there is still some, some time to wait. Uh, in the meanwhile, I would say, you know, and, and it's my recommendation for everyone, for everyone who is waiting for I-130 petition to reunify with the family, try to find alternative ways of bringing of having an ability for your relatives to come down here and visit you it can be as easy as b1 b2 visa non-immigrant visitor visa uh it can be you know in some situations you can do a spouse for example like the k3 visa for for u.s citizens a spouse of a u.s citizen no i think it's a non-immigrant visa it counts as non-immigrant visa uh whether it's a student visa whether it's employment whatever it is if you can find a way to do that do that because if you just wait it's going to be a very very long wait and you know it's it, if you have a lot of patience then you know good good for you uh <laughs> but you know whenever it comes to your family and, and being with your family it's uh it's really sad that our patience is tested you know whenever it comes to our family uh so thank you everyone for for your questions thank you everyone for tuning in for this video if you have any follow-up questions do not hesitate to ask them in the comments below i will be happy uh to address them god bless and i will see you in the next video